When talking about LANs at the CCNA level, we are almost exclusively interested in Ethernet. This course deals with how to make it work at a highly optimized level by using specialized devices to enhance the simple and adaptable Ethernet technology. In the early implementations of Ethernet, every device connected to a single wire, ThickNet 10 base 5 and ThinNet 10 base 2, were the most common physical layer implementations. A little later, hubs were used. All these technologies did effectively the same thing, connect many hosts together so that one of them at a time could transmit on the wire. This created a single, often large, collision domain. The bigger the collision domain, the more collisions and the less data that actually gets sent. In these types of implementations, you can lose 50 to 60% of the available bandwidth just because of collisions. So if we had a 10 base T hub, not only did we actually end up with only 4 to 5 megabits instead of 10, but that reduced bandwidth must also be shared by all the devices on that segment instead of each device getting the full 10 megabit. Breaking up or segmenting collision domains is necessary to make them small enough so that devices can reliably transmit data. We can segment using routers, but routers are expensive and difficult to configure. In addition, they don't typically have very many ports on them, so we would need a lot of them to segment effectively. Bridges were developed to address this issue. A bridge isolates one collision domain from another while still connecting them and selectively allowing frames to pass from one to the other. A switch is simply a bigger, faster bridge. Every port on a switch or bridge is its own collision domain. The terms bridge and switch can be used interchangeably when discussing their basic operations. We use the term switch because switches are more modern and more common. A switch must do three things, address learning, frame forwarding, and layer two loop removal. We have been using the term switch interchangeably with bridge, but there are some significant differences that you need to know about. The key difference is in the technology. Bridges, which are older, do all the work of frame analysis and decision making in software using the CPU to analyze data stored in RAM. Switches use ASIC, or Application Specific Integrated Circuit Chips. ASICs are specialized processors designed to do one thing, in this case, switch frames. Depending on the model of switch, the speed difference can be astounding. A bridge typically switches around 50,000 frames per second, whereas a lowly 2950 switch can move an average of 12 million frames per second. This, of course, depends on the frame size. A big switch, such as the Catalyst 6500 series, could do 10 times that, depending on the hardware configuration. Switches also tend to have many more ports than bridges. A bridge, by definition, has at least two ports, and they did not get much bigger than 16 ports. Switches can have hundreds of ports if you buy the appropriate expansion modules. Other differences include switches support half and full duplex, bridges only half duplex. Switches support different port speeds, 10 and 100 megabits, for example, but a bridge's ports must all be the same speed, and switches support multiple VLANs and an instance of spanning tree for every VLAN. More on that soon.